Now, before that, there is one thing that we need to address. We live in a nation state. If we live in a nation state, certain assumptions and presumptions go along with the concept of a nation state. Which means I am entitled to protect my borders. So I have the power as well as the duty to protect my borders. Has globalization made a difference to the idea of a nation state in real practical terms? I don't think so. I think perhaps the best example as on date would be the Brexit example. The fact that you cannot erase identities, you cannot erase ethnic identities, or you can't erase religious identities or national identities, or the concept of nationalism is not moot. The concept of nationalism has not become redundant is something that we need to recognize because that is at the heart of this entire issue. Because the argument which you will be uh, fed from the other side is, India is a country whose history is full of migrations. In fact, I had a gentleman write on my timeline on Twitter that what happened from 780 till 1947, inclusive of both, let's say, the Muslim invasions as well as the British colonialism, is an example of migration according to him. <laughs> I didn't know whether to pity him or to laugh my guts out. I just said, ignore the fool. There's no point in engaging with such a person. If you can't distinguish between invasion, migration, settlement, and colonialism, God save you. In fact, then I think there is something seriously wrong with our education system, which it is. So the problem is to conflate these, these two issues. Well, see, the thing is, their convenient position is, if you are wrong on the law, and if you don't have a clear position to support yourself as far as the law is concerned, they'll immediately switch to the other argument, which is the civilization argument and the globalization argument to say, are you not living in the era of Cold War, where you still think that national identity is a nation state as a concept still matters? Of course it matters. How does it not matter? Of course it matters. If let's say India is only a land of migrations, and it's only been a successive wave of migrations, and it's all been peaceful, why do we still push the Aryan invasion theory? Let it be the Aryan migration theory. Perhaps we may even accept it, even if it's flimsy, has no basis, is scientifically flawed. You can't see on the one hand that you have a problem with this particular racial stock invading this country and saying that they subjected Dravidians to a lot of oppression, and then use the Aryan invasion theory to peddle one agenda, and then justify every other mi uh, invasion as migration. <laughs> I don't see how both of these can hold water. Something is terribly wrong. And I think it doesn't need an IQ of 120 or even 150 to understand that there is a problem with both these arguments. You can't actually say that both of them are consistent and they can be reconciled. Not possible at all. So we need to understand that unless and until we agree and accept that the concept of a nation state continues to be valid and it has to remain valid, there is no point in discussing the subsequent issues because then you'll say you're only dealing with technicalities. Your mind will immediately say, sorry, you're living in the old world, you're a dinosaur. You're not modern, you're not secular, you're not liberal, and therefore you have not embraced the concept of globalization in, in spirit and in substance, and that's why you continue to harp on my country, my territory, my border, and this kind of nonsense. Why do you fight? War is all useless. I'm so sorry. Be it war or every other concern that we are faced with today is intrinsically connected to the concept of a nation state, at least as far as our external issues are concerned, or perhaps even internal issues. Be it aggression from within, let's call it Naxalism, or aggression from outside. Both of them are challenges to India as a state, India as a nation state. Therefore, it's important to respect the sanctity of the concept of a nation state in the first place, and then ask ourselves, what has it got to do with this particular issue? As I said, the concept of protection of your sovereign borders flows from your right as a sovereign state. <laughs>